David Groves, also known by his birth name Patrick David McKay, was a British serial killer who was said to be among the country's most prolific murderers. Between 1973 and 1975, he admitted to killing 13 people in England's London, Essex, and Kent. And very soon, he could be released from prison. Welcome to 10-Minute Murder, Brief and Bingeable True Crime. I'm Joe, the host. Thank you for being here today. And I'm a little bit frustrated with myself because in a conversation earlier today, I used the phrase, much to my chagrin. I've never said that in my life. What, I don't know where it came from. I don't vacation in the Hamptons and I don't wear a monocle. Who, what business do I have of saying much to my chagrin? Nobody really says that in an unironic way, right? And even more frustrating, the person that I talked to, I thought I could trust them. And much to my chagrin, they didn't check me at all. They acted like it was a normal thing to say. All right, before we get going with your story today, this is your reminder to subscribe to 10 Minute Murder so that you will always be able to find the show and never miss an episode. If you're brand new to listening to this podcast, welcome. I'm super pumped that you're here. Hit the subscribe button. And also, you can connect with 10 Minute Murder on social media. If you've got friends that are also into true crime stories, please let them know about this podcast. Links are in the show notes of this episode, as well as at 10minutemurder.com. Now, to today's story. Patrick McKay was born on September 25th, 1952, at Park Royal Hospital in London, which is now Central Middlesex Hospital. In Dartford, Kent, he was raised alongside his sisters, Patrick McKay's parents are Guyana-born Marion McKay and Scottish accountant Harold McKay. Like so many serial killers you hear me talk about, his childhood was a rough one. McKay's father frequently subjected him to physical abuse when he was a child, and Patrick would frequently throw tantrums, abuse his younger classmates, and got terrible grades in school. Later, a classmate would compare McKay to a little terrorist who physically assaulted the other students. He didn't limit his terroristic behavior to humans, though. He tortured animals when given the chance and was frequently seen tearing the wings off of birds. On the way to work one day, when Patrick was 10 years old, Harold, his father, suffered a heart attack, brought on by many years of abusing his body with alcoholism. He died from that heart attack, but right before he took his last breath, he said to Patrick, Remember to be good. Spoiler alert. Patrick must have forgotten. The fact that I'm doing a murder podcast episode about him should be an indicator. Patrick claimed that his father was still alive, and he carried a picture of him around with him wherever he went. He was clearly struggling to cope and accept the death of his father. And this was enabled by his mother, who told him not even to attend the funeral, which is a place that you usually go to for closure. I suppose when he finally came to terms with the death, he began acting in a way that he thought the father figure or man of the house, should act. Unfortunately, this included physically abusing his mother and sisters. Family life didn't improve, and Patrick's mother eventually relocated the family from Dartford to Gravesend, and the police were often called to the house, sometimes up to four times per week. As he got older, he was prone to violent outbursts and had a quick temper, during which Patrick continued to abuse his family. He also attempted the life of a small child, and afterwards said that if he had not been restrained, he would have been successful in that attempt. Dr. Leonard Carr, a psychiatrist, identified McKay as a psychopath at the age of 15 and predicted that he would one day become a cold, psychopathic killer. Between the ages of 12 and 22, he was removed from his family's house 18 times and placed in a variety of prisons, institutions, and specialized schools. He was labeled by one of the teachers at a specialized school as a possible murderer of women, in their professional opinion. When McKay was identified as a psychopath in October 1968, he was admitted to Moss Side Hospital in Liverpool. In 1972, he was released and became free. During this time, McKay developed a passion for Nazism. He adopted the name Franklin Bolvolt I, 
and surrounded his apartment with Nazi artifacts. He lived in London and was a frequent abuser of alcohol and drugs. The posh London neighborhoods of Chelsea and Knightsbridge experienced an uptick in petty crimes when McKay was released from prison in 1972, an enormous unexplained increase in muggings, robberies, and handbag snatchings suddenly occurred in these locations, which are known for being home to some of the wealthiest citizens of London and being full of luxury stores and high-end restaurants. The mystery perpetrator particularly targeted older women, befriending them to get entry into their houses and carry out the attacks. Later, McKay's involvement in these cases would be discovered. 84-year-old Isabella Griffin was physically beaten, choked, and stabbed by McKay in her Chelsea home on February 14, 1974. He was not recognized by police as the culprit, and the neighborhood's muggings and small-time robberies continued. An elderly Adele Price was killed in her Chelsea home by McKay 13 months later, after she let Patrick inside when he asked for a glass of water. At the time, her granddaughter was returning home and unknowingly crossed paths with McKay as he fled the scene. The killings of these two women and the crime wave had police scrambling for clues and begging for leads. On March 21, 1975, a priest named Father Anthony Crean was murdered in his home in Shorn, Kent, not far from the residence of McKay's mother. An axe that had been used in a panicked attack on Crean was discovered on the site. Numerous witnesses had reported seeing Patrick McKay in the vicinity. An officer conducting the investigation recalled an incident involving the young McKay from a few months prior when the boy made friends with the priest before breaking into his house and stealing a 30-pound check. Despite Crean's efforts to convince the police otherwise, McKay was detained and charged at the time. He was subsequently told to make restitution, but he never did. McKay and Crean fell out over what happened, and the former had already left for London. When the officer remembered the incident, police detained McKay, who promptly confessed to killing Crean. After being taken into custody for the murder of Father Crean, McKay's fingerprints were compared to those at the scene of Adele Price's death. In McKay's residence, items from his robberies in the Chelsea and Belgravia neighborhoods, including jewelry and silver fountain pens, were discovered. In Clapham, McKay led investigators to a location where he claimed to have tossed a knife that was used in his murders. When the Metropolitan Police started looking into McKay, they discovered that he was responsible for a huge number of other crimes and unsolved homicides in the London area. Following his admission to killing Father Crean, McKay then shockingly admitted to killing 13 additional unsolved homicides. Investigators looked into his accounts of the deaths and discovered that they did indeed match aspects of the unsolved homicides that had happened in and around London, even though the majority of these crimes were unknown to the interrogating police. In interviews, McKay claimed that the murder of German au pair Heidi Minilk, 17 years old, on July 9, 1973, was his first homicide. She had been stabbed by McKay aboard a train before the door was opened and she was thrown outside near Catford. He additionally alleged that he killed a drunk homeless guy by throwing him from a bridge into the Thames River in January 1974. McKay said that he killed Stephanie Britton, 57, and her four-year-old grandson Christopher Martin on January 12, 1974, but he said he only killed the child because he was a witness. He admitted to killing Frank Goodman, who had been kicked to death over a pack of cigarettes, on June 13, 1974, and he continued by admitting that on December 23, 1974, he killed 92-year-old Sarah Rodmill in her Hackney apartment by nailing the back door shut and stuffing her mouth with stockings, stating that, quote, killing her was as easy as washing my socks. He also admitted to killing cafe owner Ivy Davies, 48 years old, in South End in February, telling police that he beat her to death with a peg from a tent and investigators knew this part to be true because there was evidence of her being beaten with some type of previously unidentifiable metal bar. In addition to the 1973 murder of Mary Hines in Kentish Town, he also admitted to the 1974 and 1975 killings of Adele Price and Isabella Griffin. Investigators concluded that McKay was responsible for the string of muggings and thefts that occurred in Chelsea and Kensington, but had not yet been solved. Later, McKay renounced his admissions to all but four of the murders, 
Griffith, Price, Crean, and the homeless man that he said he'd thrown from the bridge in 74. This meant without his confession, there wasn't enough evidence to put him on trial for any more of the homicides. Police were unable to identify the homeless man McKay claimed to have killed. After entering a guilty plea based on diminished culpability at his trial in November of 1975, McKay was found guilty of the manslaughter of Adele Price, Isabella Griffith, and Father Anthony Crean. He was found not guilty of killing Goodman or Hines due to a lack of evidence, but the charges were nonetheless kept on file. Later, the police discovered proof that he'd murdered Frank Goodman. He received a life sentence with a 20-year minimum sentence. Medical professionals determined that McKay was indeed a psychopath, despite his defense's claim of insanity. There is a fine line between a personality disorder and a mental disorder. He made a brief appearance in the 1989 40 Minutes documentary Danger Men, which aired in February 1990. A special unit was established in Hull Prison to handle one of the most dangerous and difficult prisoners, and McKay served time there. There is never any suggestion in my mind that I was ever a psychopath, is what McKay responded when he was asked if he was a psychopath. Since McKay's minimum sentence was 20 years, he was eligible for parole in 1995. The board consistently rejected his request for complete freedom. He was permitted, though, to relocate to an open jail with release options in 2017. Gareth Johnson, a Dartford MP, expressed alarm about McKay's prospective release in 2019. He brought up the matter in Parliament and wrote to the Secretary of State for Justice. It was again decided to release McKay in June 2020. A new investigation into his involvement in the killings that he had previously confessed to and was still being suspected of having committed was ongoing as the parole board was being postponed. The parole board declared in May 2021 that he would not be qualified for release, but might be allowed to continue serving his sentence in open prison. It was discovered that McKay's case had once more been forwarded to the parole board in July 2022. As of 2022, McKay has spent 47 years behind bars. 